welcome to Staging the Third Act with Janine Escalier Cotto. And my guest this week is someone who actually reached out to me, which means I'm getting a little traction with my show. I'm so excited. Rosalie Wolfram reached out to me because she liked my show, and I was very honored and very thrilled. And then I met with her and found out what a fascinating person she is, oh which gave me the idea of community. Rosalie is very involved in the Auburn community, and her story is a fascinating one. And you know this show is about for, by, and about baby boomers who have no children or grandchildren, and how we are forging into our final third act of life and doing it creatively and positively. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce Rosalie Wolfram. Hi, Rosalie. Yeah, hi. Thank you so much and for call being me here. Rosie. Everybody does. Good. I'd rather call you Rosie. You. Rosie, um, I'm just intrigued by your positivity. You have gone, you've been a widow now quite a while. You Since haven't 95. remarried. Mm -hmm. You haven't remarried. You don't have children, yet you have the most positive, brilliant spirit, um, and you're forging all of this alone. I want to know your secret. Well, um, when my husband passed away, I did go into a little bit of a funk. I mean, we all do. You know, grief goes up and down. Uh, but after my first Christmas alone, I decided, you know what, that's enough. It's enough. So I ventured out. I joined a few clubs that I had read about. I re uh, joined the League of Women Voters, which I had been a member of in the League nice. in the Bay Area. And I joined the Catholic Ladies Society. I just wanted to get out and meet new people. And I started, um, of course, I've always read the paper, but I started writing letters to the paper. And the then editor, Dennis Noon, asked me for coffee. Went to Depot Bay, and he said, would you consider writing a guest column once in a while? And we have a visitor. Uh, yes, we do. <laughs> I'm going to scoot him off, and we will continue. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> you never know with live and, TV. And I said to him, a guest column. He said, yes, we'd like people from the community to write a few things about whatever. And he said, it just has to be anywhere from 700 to 800 words. And I kind of gulped a little bit and I said, wait a minute, I'm the one that writes these short to the point letters. He said, Rosie, you can do this. So I started doing that and all of a sudden I had a column up from Rosie. Wow. But then, you know, things changed in the paper. I went through six editors so far, but, and it's just, it wasn't something that I wanted to continue that much. I still write letters to the editor whenever I have a, a point to make. Um, but I never knew I could write, really. And it was very surprising when he called me and I said, you think I could do this? And he said, absolutely, you could do this. And it was a lot of fun. And I met, through that, I met people at the grocery store that said, you're Rosie Wolfram. And all of a sudden I thought, oh, wow, you know, am I famous or infamous? <laughs> Either way, yeah, either you know, way. but through the organizations, I started meeting other people and I started meeting, going into other things. Um, and I have, you know, I, I've, I've made some wonderful, wonderful friends. And I always say the friends I have, it's the family I choose. What would you, so what advice would you give people in your situation who aren't as outgoing? I mean, you're obviously, you were born an outgoing yeah. person who has a positive spirit where you just rise to the top. You know, you're buoyant and you rise to the top. What would you say about people who I, I can't get behind or can't get themselves out of that grief and, and they don't feel like they can venture out? Well, I've met a lot of people who have lost their husbands, wives. Uh, I used to be the uh, assistant manager of the hospice thrift store because oh. hospice helped me a lot. Nice. You know, and I thought, well, it's something to give back to. And a lot of widows. We tend to marry men that are older, so we become widows. <laughs> <laughs> it's a way of life, right? <laughs> and um, and I tell them, you know, uh, they may not be ready to do anything, but to at least go to a grief counseling session once nice. in a while. Nice, good advice. You meet other people. I met other people that had it so worse than me. I mean, young widows that had children, that yeah. had nobody helping them. Uh, but 
as Connie, one of the counselors, Connie Elric Mayer, I loved her. She said, Rose, and I said to her, well, they're so bad, so much worse than me. She said, honey, the rock in your shoe hurts too. That's Acknowledge nice. that. But I was very fortunate. Um, I, I, maybe it's because I was born and raised in New York. I don't know, but I just, <laughs> you know, and I'm Italian, so we chat. Yes. <laughs> Um, but I, I think you just have to kind of put one foot in the uh, front of the other and just venture out and don't be so... And I think you're a catalyst for other people. I think you going out to these organizations and volunteering, you meet the kind of people that need someone like you to say, it's okay, Yeah. Um, venture out, I'm here. Well, you know, we have a senior center in, in Auburn, and I wish more people would take advantage of it. There's all kinds of things that they offer. Um, you know, if you're an artist, or if you're a writer, uh, if you like to play cards. I, I learned how to play Mahjong. Hmm. It's very addictive. <laughs> <laughs> and I've heard. It, it really is. And, and it's just, it's a way of meeting people. And, 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 and through hospice, and when I was the manager there, I sat and listened to a lot of stories, and you and I love older people. Mm. Now, of course, I'm old now, but when I was a widow, I was 50, so. Mm, yeah. <laughs> uh, but I met a woman who used to sing with the old big bands. Wow. And I thought, oh, you know. And then I also met a lady who was so sweet. She, she, was, she said to me, oh, you're so young, sweetheart, to lose your purse. She said, I've been a widow three times. Wow. I said three times, and then I laughed, and I said, well, you think you want to try again? <laughs> and she said, oh, honey, they're so fragile. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't help it. I just laugh. <laughs> I met another. I think that's your, that's, I, a, I, that's your key ingredient right there. I had another woman tell me, you're too young to be alone. You should have found somebody by now. And I said, well, I haven't found anybody that makes my heart flutter. And in 20 years, you haven't no, found anybody? No, I haven't. Well, my husband was a tough act to follow, I have to say. He was really special. I know, but you know, there's different kinds of I love. I know, I know. But I haven't found anybody that makes, and that's what I'm waiting for. Boy, girl, you have high standards. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but, but this particular woman, she said to me, well, you don't get married just for that. And I got a little annoyed. I said, okay, you sound like a woman of experience. How many times are you married? She said, eight. Oh, God. I, I looked at her, and I, mind you, I was a lot younger, and the mouth just went. And I said to her, eight times. I said, that's not getting married. That's having a hobby. And, I, and after I said it, I thought, oh, God. Fortunately, she laughed. <laughs> well, well, I think... I love that you put your husband in a special place and that you have those memories and that you had that great love mm -hmm. and you don't need it anymore. Well, everybody deserves that. Yeah. I think, you know, before I came to California, I never knew a divorced person. It's just the way it was. You know, I'm Italian. We used to laugh and say, well, we never divorce. We kill them, but we wouldn't <laughs> I came here and I met so many women that were so. We kill them. We don't know, We're so. sorry. That's just. <laughs> yeah. It, and uh, with that, I'll have a cookie. <laughs> <laughs> but I think everybody should have at least one good love. I, I went I through figure, one marriage to find my true love, yes, the second that's marriage. Right. So. So I figured I, I lucked out the first time. And I'm not saying it's never, ever going to happen. I mean, who knows? I'm open to it. But but you don't need it. No. You've got your your community work. Yeah. You have your friends. You have your church. And, you have, you and, have a lot. In fact, um, through all my endeavors, I've met, we have seven women that started this group. And we're called the Dalinks. Not darlings with a G, with a K at the end. And they're so loving. And you need people like that. And, and you know, if we need anything at all, I can call up one of these ladies and say, you know what, I need you. They're there in two seconds. That's what I mean about community. Yeah. yeah. That's the community is so important. Yeah.
that support. And I, you know, we had a few widows that came to hospice or store to kind of help out, and uh, I found that men don't necessarily have that friendship, mm -hmm. that long friendship. Um, and when I worked at God, oh, I started. Some men. I started working at Gotchucks too. That was a, another little change for me. I had never worked retail before, and I was in lingerie, and it was a ball. And I went and became... I would think anything you do <laughs> is a ball, Rosie. <laughs> well, I went there, and I was I became a certified bra fitter. So, and I still have people that refer to me as the bra lady of Auburn. <laughs> but it, it's just, it was just a lovely... I mean, I have stories about what happened in, you know, that store, but we'll talk another time. But it's just fun. And I met a lot of women and uh, sat with them about, I had an elderly woman who, she said, I can't put on my bra. My husband used to help me. And Aww. I said, let me show you how you do it. Da, da, da. I had a woman who had had um, a mastectomy and she thought she looked just terrible oh. and I got her in the dressing room and talked to her and then we used to have a bra from Playtex, I think, uh, just my size or whatever it was called and had a little bit of padding, not a heck of a lot. And I put that on her and then I said, put your t-shirt back on and look at it and she looked at herself and she said, oh, my God, what a difference. And I said, you know, it's okay, you know. I wow. said, but you're still here. Just keep that in mind, you're still here. And her husband was so grateful because he wanted to take her on a cruise and she didn't want to go because she didn't think she looked good enough. Oh, wow. I, you know. It, Those are really important stories yeah. and important connections. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, and then I had another lady who had, had been badly burned as a young person and she was very raw, uh, and any bra used to chafe. So we had another uh, thing that was a camisole, very, very soft, that had a, a bra in there. And I put that on her, and she said, oh my God, this is so comfortable. She bought eight of them. Wow. And of course, like everything else in retail, they don't make them anymore. Yeah. It kills me. Things that sell, yeah. the manufacturers change. I know. Same thing with lipstick, anything. Anything that has to do with women, they change. I know. Men can still go and buy Lee jeans and, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> but anyway, working at Gotchucks was a lot of fun. Yeah. It really was. Well, I think you bring the fun wherever you go. Well, yeah, my friends used to say, we knew you were in the store the minute we walked in the room because we heard you. <laughs> so, yeah. so um, what I'm hearing is community, Laughter, connection. Yeah. Laughter is, is very important. Mm -hmm. And the latest thing I started to volunteer for was Sight Word Busters. And uh, that's an organization that goes into the elementary schools and they hit kindergarten to second grade. And nice. we help children with their learning uh, nice. to read. That is so and needed. I'm sorry I didn't start years ago. I am having a ball. Now, I mean, is it just in things. Auburn or is it? No, I think it's all over, but it's, I, all I know is the ones in Auburn, you know. Uh, I'm at Rock Creek School, which Aww. unfortunately might be closing. I hope that doesn't happen. But the children are just so darling. Can you say into your camera that organization one more time? It's called Sight word busters they have a website and if you want to you can volunteer it's one hour a week i think anybody can give one that's hour a, a wonderful week. organization and you know i never had children but i had godsons in my life uh -huh. and i had a lot of young people in my life during my life my grandmother had 14 children and they all had kids so wow. i did a lot of babysitting so not having children was okay with me yeah <laughs> Yes. Of my own. When I taught for 36 years, yeah. so I had yeah. a, I had a lot of children as yeah. well. <laughs> yeah, but those those kids are just I don't know. I, I they look forward to you coming. Oh, they do. And um, I always blow them a kiss when I leave. I don't know if that's the law of that thing or no, if they don't can like do it that. or not. But I do that. You can do that. I do that. I know. When I had the Lincoln Volunteers, we had um, we had retired people from Sun City come into our school in Lincoln yeah. and they would come once a week and when they didn't show up the kids were really yeah. crestfallen. 
Well, you know, I recently did um, substituted for, for a, a lady friend of mine who did second grade. I do kindergarten. Mm -hmm. Love kindergarten. But anyway, she asked if I could do the second grade, and it worked into my schedule. So I said sure. So mm -hmm. for the month of October, I did the second grade. And uh, the last day I was there, I told the first young lady, I said, it was very nice meeting you, Allison, uh, but Mrs. Rushton will be back next week. And she said, you're not coming back? Oh. I said, no, sweetie, I'm just a substitute, but I thank you very much for take, you know, being nice. Anyway, she gets the next person, the next young girl, she comes up to me, you're not coming back? <laughs> kind of went all over in two seconds. <laughs> But children are wonderful. They are. They're lovely. They just express exactly what they're exactly. feeling in the moment. Exactly. Yeah. In the moment. In the moment. It's just wonderful. <laughs> I miss that. I really miss that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> like I said, I wish I started this earlier. I really do. I'm yeah. having I'm having too much fun. But then looking back yeah. at what you've done and what you've accomplished, oh, yeah. it led you to this right now. Yeah. yeah. And mm -hmm. nothing's wasted. Well, you know, when I was married, we did a lot of traveling. Um, my husband was from Germany and lived all over. Um, and the one, and he liked to, he took up mountain climbing in his 40s. I always thought that was grounds for an annulment myself, uh, but he loved it. But my claim to fame, I went to the top of Mount Whitney. Great. I did that, but I don't do the crampons and the ice axe. No. I will hike, but I won't do that. <laughs> But one year I got to go to Paris, or I was given, um, well, I had a woman friend who was a travel agent, and she said, Rosie, if you want to go to Paris, I have this great deal for you, you know, seven, seven days, six nights, you know, breakfasts, one dinner at a very fancy restaurant, a fashion show, tour of Versailles, you know, yeah, the tra I, I'm all for $1,100. Wow. And I said, wow. I, so I told my husband, I said, hey, how about it? And he said, I don't want to go there. I, I live there already. I said, fine, see ya. Yeah. <laughs> and I went. And I went all by myself. And that was the time that there was the Freedom Fries. Do you remember? Yes. Like people told I me, do you don't want to go to Paris. They hate us. I had nothing but good time there. My feeling is if you, you give back what you give out. Absolutely. And I came home and... I thoroughly enjoyed myself. Absolutely. It was wonderful. Absolutely. So, I just, um, I don't know, I, I'm very self-sufficient. Mm -hmm. I found that out about myself. Uh, because, you know, when I got married, I went from my family's home into living with my husband. I had never lived alone. And it's not that bad. So, <laughs> for me, it's not that bad. How do you think you'll be when there comes a point where you're going to need help? How do you think you're going to be accepting that? Well, um, my friend Connie, the counselor that I talked about before, she said when I when my husband first died, you know, I kept telling everybody, I'm okay, I'm okay. She said, Rosie, allow people to help you. That's all they can do. They want to help you. Allow that. Yes. So I'm going to hope that I'm going to be big enough to allow people to help me. Yeah. Uh, I'm like everybody else. I want to be in my house until the day I die. That may not happen. I may have to go into an old age place. But hopefully um, it'll be a nice place. It won't be a snake pit yes. like that movie. Yes, uh, <laughs> I agree. But, um, you know, I, every day, you never know you what's know, in your, your future. Well, my, for example, my mother is extremely independent, extremely yeah. stubborn. She's 91. Oh, wonderful. And her. she's in her home, and she's, thank God my brother lives with her. Mm -hmm. But I have help coming in, too, to help yeah. her with things that my brother can't do for her, like shower her and, you know, yeah. change her bed and laundry and stuff. But she's so open to help. She's so open to the women that come in and help her, and she's yeah. so grateful and she's so kind and loving with them. And so it's like, it gives me hope that even, because I'm stubborn and I'm fiercely independent, but to watching my mom be so gracious with them mm -hmm. and allow them into her heart, it's like, okay, I can do that. Yeah. I think I could do that. Yeah, I think so too. You know, so you're right. We just don't know and we have to live each day completely 
fully you know, with, so far, with gratitude. So I tell everybody, so far, I only take a thyroid medication. And for my age, that's big. That's, that's huge. You know. <laughs> You're lucky. I'm hoping that lasts. But You're I'm lucky. taking after my father. My father died of an aortic aneurysm, and the doctor said it's like a light bulb going off. But that man did not take any pills. He had never spent one day in the hospital. Wow. And which was fortunate because he would have been a horrible patient. <laughs> but I, you know, maybe it's just good genes or maybe it's the garlic and the olive oil. I don't know what it is, but so far it's so genes. good. It's you know. genes. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, about the community stuff, yeah. how many would you say right now in your life, how many things are you involved in? Just off the top of your head, okay. you can't count them. <laughs> well, I'm a vice president of the League of Women Voters, which I want to tell people we are not an offshoot of the Democratic Party. Don't believe that. We are non-partisan. We don't endorse any candidate or any party. I am also um, belong to the Catholic Ladies Group, uh, which may be disbanding because we're getting older can't get younger people. It's no. like everything. I'm doing sight word busters. I belong to another few political parties. Uh, <laughs> and um, I just, you know, I just, I don't like housework, so I'm out of the <laughs> house all the time. That's basically uh, my deal. Mm -hmm. I really don't. Um, you yeah. know, people come to my, I had a woman friend one time. She got really angry with me. She said, you don't make your bed every day? And this was even when my husband was alive, right? <laughs> and I said, no, I don't. And she said, well, that's just terrible. And my husband, bless his heart, he said, what? We're airing out the sheets. What's wrong with that? And I, <laughs> Now, I'm more anal. I know. Some, most people are. I'm um, more, and, but and I he, think it's if I make my bed, that's going to force me to get up and get moving. Oh no, that doesn't happen with me. But these days, if I try to make up my bed, there's usually two cats in there, so oh, I just let it. Yeah, go. that's different. I just throw. I just throw the sheets over the cat. <laughs> I just make it over, yeah. and then he goes, "Oh, okay, I'm gonna." <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I I had another friend who was very. I mean, every time you walked into her house, it was house beautiful, you know, like a magazine thing. And I thought, that's never going to happen with me. <laughs> and uh, she said to me, well, my house is so clean, we can eat off the floor. I said, but, you know, we haven't done that in centuries. So, you know, what's the good? Yeah. Uh, I just When you're on your deathbed, I don't think you're thinking about, my no. house was so clean, I could no. eat off the floor. No. That's not what you're thinking about. You're thinking about... Saying goodbye to loved ones and thanking and being grateful and thinking back on your life of all the things that you were yeah. given. I mean, I really. Hope, I hope when I do go, and we all will go, I hope people remember me as being kind. Mm, I that's mean, it. I, I try to be kind. That's um, it. You know, Absolutely. That do unto others as I have them do unto you. Mm -hmm. I, that's a biggie with me. You know, it's interesting. Um, I've watched myself evolve through aging. And when I started going to Oaxaca 20 years ago, it was all about the excitement of travel. Mm -hmm. And it was the independence, it was the culture, and it was meeting people. And it was just, you know, feeling independent and strong. And my husband and I, we travel separately. And we travel together, but yeah. because we have dogs that we can't yeah. board. But the point is, now that I've aged and I'm aging, it's totally shifted. I went to Oaxaca this, and I go usually every year, but there was a four-year span yeah. with COVID. And now it's all about kindness. Mm -hmm. It's like all that other stuff went into the background, and kindness has come right up into the forefront. And all I concentrated on or saw or felt was the kindness mm -hmm. that I encountered. The kindness of people I've known for 20 years there. The kindness of, that I, I met on the street. The kindness of the people. The kindness, and it moved me so deeply. Yeah. And that's, it, it is. It's like when we age, we, it, it, we it fetter out the important things. It doesn't cost anything to be kind. No. Uh, and you know, life these days is so, well, we just got over an election, right? And uh, I want people.
people to get back to being cooperative and working together. You know, exactly. Working together. Working, yeah. Yes. Exactly. And um, I had a very spiritual experience with a woman in Mexico who, she's an incredible artist, yeah. Josefina Aguilar. Um, she makes clay women, oh. strong women from the Oaxacan culture. Yeah. And her stuff's all over the world. And I got to meet her and be in her presence. And it was a spiritual experience for me because the women that live off the land are the strongest women on the planet of any country. Yeah. They live off the land, they work with their hands. And I, that's where I got my rebirth. This mm -hmm. woman has raised six children, lost a husband. Mm -hmm. Those children were at her, in her workshop with her, carrying on her legacy. And she's totally blind and she's making clay animals, oh. just totally blind with her hands. Her hands are working constantly. And that excited me more than any of the Day of the Dead celebrations, um, any of the food, which was all wonderful. But it was a religious experience for me. And it's the strength of, the, it's the strength of women that, that I took away. And it gave yeah. me the feeling that people like you and me and that are aging into being alone, yeah. we have that. We have that strength to affect other people even though we don't have children and grandchildren to do that for us, yeah. we are affecting other people like she affected me yeah. through kindness. Yeah. Yeah. Like you are out there in the community doing great things with people, for people. And I, I, I got the message I needed to get. And I have been going through a real depression in the last three years. And that woman just pulled me out of that depression. Yeah. I, I was like, oh my God, this woman who's blind and poor, I mean, I don't know how much money she makes from her work because the house was very humble. It's yeah. the house that she raised yeah. her children in, in a very humble Pueblo. But she's still working yeah. with her hands and her children have taken it all up and they're doing fabulous things. And I bought one of the, oh, the yeah. statues. I was thrilled, it's on my mantle. Um, so it kind of stems from all of that. It's yeah. like the key to everything. Yes, exactly. And I agree. that's what connected me to you when we met. It yeah. was like, wow, this woman has it in spades, and I want to get some of that, and I want her on my <laughs> show, and I well, want her to spread a little know, of that. You, you, yeah, oh, you make a choice in life. You can either sit at home and wallow, or you decide, you know what, this is the life that was given to me. Let's try to make the best of it. Yes. And we have to live and for your husband. You have to continue that joy and live for him. Well, I don't know if that's the case for me, but he was uh, he was a force. <laughs> but um, I don't know. I, I've I've learned that I can. I'm very independent, and and thank goodness I can take care of myself. Mm -hmm. You know. But yes. I still, every once in a while, I have to call somebody to change the light bulb because I won't get on a high light. No, bulb. don't please. <laughs> I won't let my husband, who's very, he's, yeah. I, he's, I, I won't let him get on the, the ladder to, to do the Christmas decorations no. anymore. No, so, I, no way. No. But uh, I don't know. It, it, but so far, my life has been very nice. I Would, mean, I consider myself very, very lucky. Yeah, even though I lost. You're I, blessed. I lost my husband, and then six months after that, I lost my boss of 20 years. And six months after that, I lost my, my father. I went through a little bit of a funk. Yeah, that's but hard. you know what? You can come out the other end. And you just keep on going. I think that that's your parting words. And if you'd like to say yeah. one more thing to our audience, yeah. this is your chance since we have a minute left. Okay. <laughs> well... I would, um, like I said, I'm having a wonderful time working with Sight Word Busters, and if anybody has an hour a week that they'd like to contribute, it's a great organization, and they do have a website. Um, so, Thank you for being here, and thank you for all that you do. Really thank appreciate you, it. It's been lovely. And thank you for watching Staging the Third Act, and we're going to be off for December because of the holidays, but I'm hoping to get a psychotherapist the next time. Oh, well, wow. And, or a hypnotherapist, so please stay tuned in January. Thanks for watching. This is Janine Escalier-Cato.